Hey guys, Scout Survival here, and today we're going to do a video on land navigation using a compass and pace count beads. Now, the first thing you need to determine when using pace count beads is your pace. You need to know how many steps that you take, or how many paces, in 100 meters. Now, how you're going to do that is you're going to get a piece of rope or a piece of string or something that you can use to measure out 100 meters. And you're going to measure that 100 meters out on different terrain. You're going to do it on flat terrain like this, uneven terrain, down, terrain that goes down, terrain that goes up. And you're going to measure your pace count with your pack on and all your gear. And how are you going to do that is you're going to start with your left foot. And every time your right foot hits the ground, that's one pace. And I'll show you. Four. So every time my right foot hits the ground, that's one pace. And I'm going to measure that out over different terrain, like I said. And you're going to get different numbers for different terrain. So uh, you're going to get all your, num all your paces done, and you're going to add them up. So if you do four different things, if you do flat, uneven, downhill, and uphill, you're going to add all four of those together and divide by four, and that's your average pace count. You can also do it, if you want, you can add snow, you can add mud, and uh, that just gets you probably even a closer, better average of what your pace count is. It's not going to change much, but it'll give you a better idea of what your pace count really is. And once you get your pace count, say your pace count is 67. As you're traveling, every time your right foot hits the ground, you're going to count. Every time your right foot, that's one, two, three. When you get to 67, you're going to take your pace count beads your mind here. You're going to take your pace count beads. Once you get to 67, you're going to pull down one bead. That's 100 meters travel. You're going to count 67 again with your right foot. 200 meters travel. 300 meters travel. 400 meters travel until all nine are down and then on the next 100 meters you're going to pull down one of the ones in the here, the four. You're going to pull one of these down and you've traveled one kilometer. You're going to pull these back up and you're going to continue on 67 paces, you're going to pull down one. Another 67 paces, you're going to pull down two, 100 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters, until all of them are down, and then on the next 100 meters, you're going to pull down another one of these beads, and that's two kilometers traveled. This set right here, you can do 5K. Once you get all four down, these are back up, and you travel 100 meters, 200 meters, 900 meters, and then your next 100 meters is going to be your 5K. So this will, this will uh, keep track of 5K for you. And then, of course, you can start all over again. So that's how the pace count beads work. And these are my pace count beads right here. I have it attached to my compass. It comes off. If I want to put it somewhere else, this comes right off. If I want to put this on my zipper pull or on my belt or something like that, I don't have it with my compass. So let's talk about something else here. Let's talk about dead reckoning. So you can travel through the forest or through the wilderness with just a compass. If you don't have a map or if you've traveled off your map, that can happen as well. If you have a map for an area and you've traveled so far, you're off your map, then you don't have a map of the area that you are in anymore. So if you know generally which direction that you want to travel, you're going to open your compass. If it has a mirror like this, it's even better. You're going to open your compass and you're going to cite the direction that you want to travel. And there's a little notch. You can see right here. There's a little notch right there. And you're going to cite through that notch in the direction that you want to travel. So let's see here. Holding your compass level. Pull your mirror down. Cite that direction. And then turn your bezel until the arrow on the bezel lines up with the north arrow or the needle is in the doghouse, as they say. Once you got that there, holding your compass level, and you're pointing in the direction, you look at the bezel and see what your reading is. I have 64 degrees on here. So, 64 degrees is my bearing. And at 64 degrees, I'm gonna sight a landmark that I can see through my notch. I see that landmark, I'm gonna close my compass, 
I'm going to walk to that landmark, counting my paces with my pace count beads. Once I get to that landmark, I'm going to open up my compass at that landmark. I'm going to shoot another bearing through the notch with the needle in the doghouse. I'm going to shoot another bearing to another landmark, and I'm going to travel to that landmark. Close my compass, walk to that landmark, and continue on until I get to where I'm going, or where I, where I want to be. Um, problem comes is when you come to an obstacle. If you come to a lake and you can't go across, what you can do is you can shoot across. If you can see across the lake, you're going to shoot a bearing across the lake uh, in, in your bearing where you travel. My 64 degrees, I'm going to shoot across. And if I can see a landmark on the other side of the lake, I'm going to close my compass and I'm going to walk around the lake to that landmark and then take another reading, another bearing. But if you can't see a landmark, if it's too far across, and you can't see across to get a uh, to get a bearing on a landmark, you're going to have to walk 90 degrees from your bearing. So if my bearing was, say my bearing was zero, it's traveling exactly north, <coughs> I would go 90 degrees to my bearing. So I travel 90 degrees, 500 meters. See, 500 meters, I cleared my obstacle turn back onto your same bearing, walk past your obstacle, and then turn 90 degrees in the other direction, walk you 500 meters, so you've traveled away from your bearing 500 meters, past your obstacle, and 500 meters back. And that's when the pace count beats really, uh, really help out, because you know the distance you traveled away from your bearing, cleared your obstacle, and you traveled the same distance back to your bearing. And then you should be back on your bearing on the other side of the lake. Take another reading, another bearing with your 64 degrees and pick out a landmark and continue on. And then you cleared your obstacle. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, um, you can find me on Facebook at Scout Survival Group or on YouTube. Uh, any questions at all, let me know and I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, this is Scout Survival and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.